Welcome to chapter two. In the previous session, we discussed the role of crime and intelligence analysis in very common policing strategies, the strategies of ComStat, problem-oriented policing, intelligence-led policing, and predictive policing and truly how the use of crime and intelligence analysis is a transformative process to more effective, efficient, and defendable decision-making. In this next session, we will discuss the difference between what crime and intelligence analysis looks like in many different organizations, but truly what crime and intelligence analysis can provide if it's optimally used within your department. As a recap, Crime analysis, according to Dr. Rachel Boba at Florida Atlantic University, is the systematic study of crime and disorder problems as well as other police-related issues. Some of these include sociodemographic, spatial, and temporal factors. These factors that assist the police in criminal apprehension, crime and disorder reduction, crime prevention, and evaluation. In essence, it's the use of law enforcement data and non-law enforcement data to determine how police should respond to a particular area, activity, or event, and then to also evaluate that particular activity, event, for outcomes. Intelligence analysis, according to the International Association of Law Enforcement Intelligence Analysis, is information that is compiled, analyzed, and or disseminated in an effort to anticipate, prevent, or monitor criminal activity. As I mentioned previously, you'll notice that these two definitions, there are very few differences among them, and there's very few differences among crime and intelligence analysis. At its core, it is the use of data to determine what is actually taking place, how it's occurring, the events, the people involved, and allowing you to determine what you should do about that particular problem, and then to assess your responses to the problem. Over the next few minutes, I will provide some examples of analytical products produced by crime and intelligence analysts in a variety of different agencies across this country. The first is a common chart showing increases and decreases in response times from 2011 to 2012. As you'll notice from this particular chart, you can see that among from 2011 to 2012, the response times both in the city as well as the different geographic areas, the zones, or what you would know of as precincts, have all increased, roughly approximately 14 to 15 percent. The next product is a list of bur business burglary incidents for the city occurring from November of 2012 to January of 2013. Among the things that you will see on this particular report include the case number, the address, the date, time, and the different businesses in which they had business burglaries during this period of time. The next example is a map of auto burglary incidents. The dots on the map represent the last three, seven, and 30 days in which these auto burglary incidents have occurred. In the backdrop of the map is a density map showing hot spots for crime and auto burglary occurring over the last six months. The next example is a chart showing different incidents occurring, both violent and property incidents, and the counts of them which were done for a particular citizen, a citizen request for information about a particular area, how many incidents occurred in that area. From the chart, you can see approximately 120 violent incidents occurred in the area, and 246 incidents occurred that were property related in this particular area. The next example is something that's commonly produced for people who are in other government por portions of the organization. Maybe it's your mayor, your city council, people who make decisions at the city level, both maybe for funding or resources. In this particular example, this is a city council area from January of 2012 to June 11th of 2012, compared to the same time now in 2013. This particular report is showing the different types of offenses, the robberies, aggravated batteries, burglaries, and the increases or decreases that have occurred, both looking at last year compared to the same time this year for this particular area. Overall, you'll notice in this particular chart, it's just simply showing that there's a 5% reduction in crime occurring in this particular area over the same period of time from 2012 to 2013. 
The next is a map of burglaries by a particular neighborhood. This is a neighborhood in which you have four burglaries over a period of time in the last 30 days. The labeling of the map actually shows the case number, the address, the date, and the time in which these incidents occurred. The next example is a list of people who were arrested for auto burglary in the last 60 days. It provides you the date in which they were arrested, the actual description of the individual, height and weight, the address at which the person lives, the address at which they were arrested, and then potentially where the incident occurred as well. Next, we see a density map of hotspots, property crime incidents that have occurred in a particular area. This actually is a map of Jacksonville, Florida, and it shows you where there are high levels of, of property crime occurring within the jurisdiction. The last example is a traditional ComStat report. It's a report that shows for a particular area the priority incidents, the priority arrests, and truly compares whether or not they are up or down. They have increases or decreases, both by a seven day, a 14 day, and a 30 day period, and also by the different crime types as well. This particular report is a report that you would see in a lot of different jurisdictions that would be used primarily for a ComStat meeting. Knowing that these incidents were up or down is what guides the discussion to figure out what people have been doing about that particular crime type in that particular area over that particular period of time and whether or not it's actually been effective. As a recap, just showing you these examples again, what you will actually notice, these are commonly created by crime and intelligence analysts in a variety of different jurisdictions. The products of what you saw here are examples of simply displaying data that is within records management systems and other law enforcement data systems. But at the core, these particular products don't contain any analysis. What they are are reports that display information simply. Most crime and intelligence analysts spend a majority of their time creating these type of products. And many of them are for often ComStat meetings or accountability meetings. In essence, these are not analytical products. They are not truly showing analysis. What ends up happening when you have a variety of products that are done this way is that you have a myriad of different ways your analysts are supporting your organization. And you can see the different lines on this particular chart showing that analysts are supporting homicide, community affairs, auto theft, internal, information technology, narcotics, robbery, a variety of different areas and a variety of different ways. Things such as working on a hotspot map, determining burglaries that have occurred in a particular area. At the end of the day, you have your analysts spread over a period of time in a, in a variety of different areas, but not truly condensed to doing analytical work. So as of that, I'd like to talk a little bit about what is crime and intelligence analysis? What is it really? And what your analysts should be providing if you're actually doing that type of work and doing it well and effectively. Crime and intelligence analysis should, should be using data and extending the data to provide context and understanding. It is not about simply displaying data. It's not about showing data in records management systems. It's about extending that data to provide context and understanding, to truly understand the why, the how, the who, the what, the where, and allowing you to make good decisions with that data, to again interpret the criminal environment. Crime and intelligence analysts should be viewed as consultants within your organization. They are objective. They don't care necessarily which way the outcome is but are simply determining what is going on with the data that's provided to them and providing good ways for you to address that issue. Analysts have to add value. They have to tell you something that you don't already know. They have to give you insight into what the data is actually saying, the key word being analysis. And they have to provide information that's actionable intelligence. If there's a product that's disseminated to you and it requires you to look into it further or find or answer additional questions, it's not truly actionable. And analysts must and should provide you information that you can take and deploy resources immediately and address that particular problem immediately. 
So I want to talk a little bit about some examples and go back through some of the things that I just showed you and how the difference of what was displayed versus what is actually analysis. So in this example, again, the response times. Response times increases. What are they the result of? Why are these increases occurring? So some examples may be the increase in signals that are coded as priority one calls for service. Maybe in the last year you actually changed a type of call from being a secondary or third level of priority to now being a first priority. There's now more calls and the response has to be done as well. That may increase the response time. Changes in call handling of priority one calls. Maybe now there has to be additional notifications made in a particular priority one call that requires the response time to be more. Increases in the communication center handling time, how much time that they spend with before the call actually gets to the patrol capacity of your organization. And increases in patrol travel time, potentially due to construction on main roads. Something as simple as if there are barricades, blocks, one ways, other ways that people have to get to a call, those are potentially going to increase your travel time. Traditional data systems allow for querying suspects with a nickname Jojo, or a suspect with a crown tattoo, or a suspect who lives in the Garden Grove neighborhood. Crime intelligence analysts are able to correlate disparate systems to locate a suspect with a nickname Jojo, Jojo with a crown tattoo who lives in the Garden Grove neighborhood. It's someone who actually combines these different examples together as well. And taking that a step further, Crime and intelligence analysts are able to expand identifying a suspect to things such as the suspect's associates, associates who have visited the suspect in jail previously, the associate's vehicles, the associate's phone numbers. Crime and intelligence analysts conduct deeper extending searching, and it's expanding from an individual to a group. An example of that is something as simple as the link analysis chart you see here, something that shows the individuals that are associated to this particular organization, their assets, their phone numbers, the different things that they own, the different things that they're connected to as well. It's really expanding them from an individual to a group. This type of product is a good display tool for showing and expanding that information that analysts can provide. Things happen over time as well. Timelines provide the expanding from one event to many events, being able to see things in a sequential order, and being able to show the depth of the actual problem over a period of time. One burglary in the last six months may not be significant, but one burglary every six months for the last two years may be significant. And timelines are an example of showing that context as well. Oftentimes we see increase and decrease maps but one of the things in, and charts, but one of the things that's extremely important is whether or not these mean anything. If you notice from this particular example, this is actually a forecast. It's a predictive algorithm that's done to see what we could be looking at in the future from 2011 to 2012. Some of these examples that include for, forecast increases in grand theft as the result of increasing the price of metal and the lack of scrap metal regulation. That's an explanation behind why the number could be increased in this particular chart. Forecast increases in carjacking as the result of improvements in the automobile technology and the reduction of auto theft that's occurring. Again, as auto theft decreases, carjacking can increase, and that's a context in which, or an understanding in which, is being done as well. And back to your traditional ComStat reporting. Expanding and transforming ComStat to be more than just simple increases and decreases in, in crime, but showing you, as this chart does, what your normal range is. If you notice from the top column there, the aggravated battery range in this area is normally 14 to 56 incidents. And in the past six months, we've had 27 in the area, something that is right within the normal range of what we've had. It's not just simply about increases or decreases in crime, but whether or not you're actually in a range that makes sense or are you above or below that range, an area that is something that's improving or an area that is considered a tipping point providing more value than just increases or decreases. And then transforming hotspot mapping, actually showing areas that are in increase and decrease. This particular map shows that the areas in red are areas that are initiating, they're expanding, they're new areas. And the increases in blue 
our really decreased areas in time as well. That concludes chapter two. Welcome to chapter three.